Okay guys, so if you've noticed now, everything is in, all the clamps are on, the loop is all put together, and I've unmounted the reservoir for two reasons. I don't like to leave a full-time fill uh, port going on here or a tube to the top of the case, but what I like to do is I like to remove this from the bracket and bring it outside of the case so it's easier to work with. It's one reason why I have it routed the way I do is because look at all this slack that I've got right here. But I also um, take off the fill plug on the top, which is this guy right here, and I take a spare uh, half inch barb and just hand tight against the o-ring and then I'll take some spare tube I'll, I'll put it on the barb here zip tie it so I don't get any leaks and what this does is this then allows me to get a fill port that's at the highest point of the loop because the easiest way you're going to bleed is to have the opening to the atmosphere or the opening to the uh, outside of the loop being above the highest point of the loop so this is what I'm doing now we're getting ready to do our fill and leak test So when you fill this, you're going to want to fill slowly because unfortunately my reservoir here only has one fill port on the top instead of two, which would have kind of helped. As you replace air in this system with coolant, the air has to escape. And the only way it has to escape is through the same port that you're filling. So what's going to happen here is you're going to see a really neat spiral effect. You're going to see only a trickle of coolant coming out of here as it's replacing liquid with air. So it's an exchange process that's happening here. Swift Tech, I doubt you're watching, but if you ever are watching, add a second port to this that we can loosen up, kind of like a bleed port on a car, because then the air has a place to go and the coolant can exchange a lot faster. It would make life a whole lot easier, R&D. You got a little guy here on YouTube telling you how to do your job. Looks like, a, looks like someone wiped their butt with it. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Little bits of time, just a little bit. Because you also don't want to get coolant trapped in this tube because you overfilled because guess what? You have to detach the tube. That's another mess that you'd have to deal with here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm only going to fill it enough to get the very bottom plug uh, completely filled. That way I can make sure that the very first junction I have right here is not leaking. And so far we're good. I love the color of this. They're waiting for it to start leaking. Yeah. Oh, and there it is. Where? I'm just kidding. Because uh, I don't want to waste any of this. I barely got enough to fill this loop. So if you see a leak, seriously tell me. All right. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and filled this up, you'll notice here that the level pretty much stopped even with this barb. Because what's happening now is we have air trapped in here. And this is the barb and the tube that leads to the lower radiator. So this is not going to be able to rise anymore until two things happen. We've got to get the air out of the system and we've got to start filling up this lower radiator. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking one of my 650 watt power supplies and I did this guys with a 300 watt like $15 unit that came in a free one that comes with a case. You can do it with that one too. Plug it into power but you have to make sure that it has a switch, one of the, you know, the toggle switches on the back that allow you to turn it on and off and you take a paper clip this is the old junction uh, trick here. You take a paper clip, cut it, bend it in half, and you jumper together on the 24 pin connector, the green wire, there's only one green wire, out of all 24 pins, there's only one green wire, and a black wire. There's one on either side, doesn't matter which one. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna, you're gonna put it right in the end right there. So what happens when you jumper these two is you're actually jumpering what's considered the power switch on the front of your PC, to a ground, which then will enable the, the switch on the back of the power supply here. Let me show you that. This one has a switch right here, an on-off, and allows you to be able to turn the power supply unit on and off with the rear switch. Okay, so now what we're gonna do to get some of this air out and get some of that replaced with fluid is we're just going to slowly flip on and off the power supply. And fortunately, because I have a variable speed pump, when we get this more full, one of the way, ways that we can help move air out of the radiators, because the upper radiator is where all the water or the air is going to want to go. I can turn the speed up and down, so, and that will help slosh some of the fluid to help get the air moving. Uh, tipping and tilting the case is another way to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to flip it on, and you can see the water level dropped, 
and came back up, but you notice now it's a little bit lower than where it was. And I want you guys to hear the sound that this makes as it starts to pull in air with the fluid. That sound is bad. So once you hear that, you want to make sure that you stop using your pump. But you saw a lot of bubbles come out of there right now. So this is the process that we're just going to keep repeating. So we're going to fill it up till it gets to this upper barb right here in the reservoir because that's where the air is going to make its way out. And then we repeat the process. And this is very tedious. It will take a while. You must have patience. If you use your water cooling loop with air in it, you will overheat something. We now have coolant trapped in here too. Though. See that? Yep. One of the things too that would really help is if you guys understand how hydraulics work, um, because there's pressure here and this tube was filled, you'll notice on that last blip of the power supply, as this level went down, water was then draw, uh, uh, fluid was then drawn in because it finally made room for the air to get out. As the air goes out, an equal amount of fluid goes in. It's all about volumetric pressure and, and the actual volume of the system itself. So that's why you have to be very patient and be careful that you don't overfill this like I mentioned earlier because you will have, as FPS Russia says, very bad day. One way to make bleeding a little bit faster and a little bit easier is while the pump is running, just slowly tilt your case in each direction. You can see some bubbles just came out right there because as you create an uneven surface and you force the air to move, the pump will take over and it will push any bubbles that are in the system out. You don't need to do any extreme tilting. You know, gravity and, and is a bitch when it comes to air. And it uh, looks like we're doing pretty good. I mean, the, the water level dropped a good, I'd say half inch, just from those couple of tilts. So just keep that process going. Keep adding fluid as necessary. And after a while, the bubbles will work themselves out. This is the part where you have to be patient and you can't rush things. Well, there it is. That's a fully built custom loop. We're bled. We're letting it run right now, checking for any leaks that we may have. You want to let this run. I personally am very gutsy. I've never let this thing run for more than a half hour before giving it power and letting it boot up. Some people recommend a 24 hour leak test. If you're using the right materials, you're using the right kind of clamps and you've got a good seal, it's very unlikely that a leak will develop in 24 hours. It's my personal opinion. You know, I'm not saying anybody else is wrong, but here it is. It's all put together. It's very simple. Honestly, in my opinion, the most complicated part is bleeding it. And that's where a lot of people make their mistakes. So if you have any questions about this water cooling build and there's more you want to know, just put it down in the comments. I'll be great to, uh, I'll be sure to answer that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who know about water cooling who'd be willing to come in and give advice too. So that's been Jay's Two Cents, custom water cooling build. Now we're going to throw this thing back together and get to gaming because I am just dying to see how this water cooling does.